All right, welcome back to KM6LYW Radio. Hey, we're going to talk a little bit more about the DigiPie today. Not my DigiPie. We're going to talk about your DigiPies. Uh, enough of you have sent in some pictures of how you've built your DigiPies. A lot of creative stuff on um, the aesthetics, the engineering, the software, new hardware designs that you guys are messing with. I'm going to try and share a lot of that here today. So we're going to talk about the DigiPie, uh, specifically the, the viewer special uh, this time on KM6LYW Radio. All right, welcome back. <laughs> I don't know, we're still doing the bumper music. Okay, so yeah, apologies to Blue Oyster Cult. I don't know if you got, you know, a lot of a lot of classic rock stuff here, that's what we do. All right, so welcome back to KM6LYW Radio. All right, let's look at some DigiPies today, but, but first, you know, if, if you don't, know what a digipi is you, you probably haven't seen any of my other videos that's what I, what I go on and on about it's a amateur radio data transceiver it's raspberry pi based it's completely wireless no monitor no keyboard in fact all you need to manage it is a cell phone wireless device a web browser um, it basically puts all these amateur radio data modes and make kind of makes them apps for your phone great for soda use great for low power stuff I mean, of course, you can use it with your, your PC and whatnot, but it does all of the modes you can think of. JS8 call, FT8, FL Digi, and all of the modes that that includes. Slow scan television, APRS, and packet radio. It's a terminal node controller, all wireless over Bluetooth. Um, you can use things like APRS Droid, and you do packet operations through your amateur radio and your DigiPi. Um, it has a bulletin board system in it. I just want to make sure I have everything. AX.25 networking. Um, you can see some examples here. On, actually, this is a slide from the uh, 1.6 release of all of the modes it'll do. And again, it's a Raspberry Pi based. And when I say Raspberry Pi, I don't mean the traditional Raspberry Pi. What you need is a Raspberry Pi Zero. This is really what I recommend. This will work with any Raspberry Pi, but uh, the Raspberry Pi Zero is kind of kind of a sexy way to, to implement this. And, and what we do, we don't implement a whole desktop on this. It's really one app at a time, so it does one thing at a time, and it does it really well. And really, that's all you need um, is a Raspberry Pi Zero. All of these apps uh, fit within ju just fine. So if you've got a USB-based radio, like an ICOM 705 or an ICOM 7300, that's not actually on, <laughs> or maybe a Yaesu 991 or any other USB radio that uh, implements audio and cat control over a USB cable. All you need is this and this and the DigiPi software image. <laughs> this is a USB cable, and you're done. Now, that's what I call like a, a Class A DigiPi. It's the easiest way to do it, but unfortunately, you know, the radios I mentioned are really expensive. Now, if you want, you can build a Class B DigiPi, which includes... The Raspberry Pi, but you can make it work with something maybe a little more affordable, you know, right? Um, and, and that's what I call a Class B DigiPi. So the Class B dig DigiPi requires a little more hardware. Okay, we're not using USB cable because that doesn't work with the cheaper radio. So the Class B one is going to implement an audio card and a push to talk circuit. So it's a little more complicated to build, but it is, it is kind of fun. So the Raspberry Pi, you need that. The Raspberry Pi is zero. You need a stacking header so you can put a couple of different cards on top of it. That's what that's called. Um, you need an audio board of some sort uh, to, uh, with line level, like line in, line out. What I'm recommending is the FE Pi audio card. Yes, I know these are hard to find, but Bud just assured me he has 50 of these in stock as of this recording, and today is uh, February 2nd, uh, 22. So the FE Pi is in stock. Uh, 20 something dollars for that has line in, line out, and you put that on top of your Pi. And then optionally, oh, actually, we've got two audio card choices. So there's another audio card here. Too. There's the Audio Injector Z. Actually, Audio Injector Zero, I think, is what we're calling this. So you can use, if you can find this one, use this. Is what It's the same, basically the same thing. Line in, line out, and it's a hat for your Raspberry Pi Zero. You'll find this one more on Amazon. Um, and then, you know, some people are actually making some breakout boards, you know, so you can hook up your radio, add a push to talk circuit. Um, Foo Hang is, is putting together this. I don't know if we have a name for this, Foo, do we? Um, I can barely read it here. Um, so this works with the FE Pi. Um, I haven't actually put this one together. Um, Foo sent this to me. Thank you, Foo. I really appreciate it. Some, some people are working on some, actually, some integrated <laughs> circuits on PCBs uh, to help make this easy. Um, and then lastly on these, um, I don't know if I have an example here. Um, you need a, a FET for uh, for push to talk on the, on the Class B 
uh, DigiPi. Here's the wiring diagram for that. I'm not going to go over it in great deal, but, detail, but up here there's a FET. All you need is a FET and a resistor, and that'll uh, allow the DigiPi to close your push to talk circuit and make your radio transmit and send audio out through the end of the audio card. So there's two kinds of DigiPies. There's a class A, which is just the Raspberry Pi Zero and a USB cable, but you usually need a prohibitively expensive radio with that. Um, if you're lucky to have those, that's all you need. Or the Class B DigiPi, um, where you can actually put together a complete unit like this, which is a Pi Zero, a audio board. This happens to be the FB Pi, and then the monitor. I mean, you don't have to have the monitor on there, but it's totally cool. I mean, look look at it over here. <laughs> the monitor totally makes. Let's see if I can zoom it in makes the DigiPi work and you can really see what it's doing here let me, let me make that a little bigger in fact I actually have a one of those youtuber lights right yeah come on is there no chance it's going to focus sometimes if i get a white background on it it helps so that's the DigiPi. um we can see it's in uh it has a bluetooth icon there that means it's connected actually to my phone um so you can use things like like throw your phone on your desk you can use things like APRS droid and for example I can send my position here using APRS droid I'm gonna say send position I don't even know if it's connected here it is km6 lyw showed up I just transmitted a packet over APRS using my phone over through Bluetooth through the DigiPi and it actually transmitted on the ICOM 705 it actually transmitted on the wrong frequency. Uh, that's probably why I haven't been getting packets here. <laughs> I bumped the dial. How many times have you guys done that? All right, that's the ICOM 705 and DigiPi. Okay, so that's what a DigiPi is about. If you really want to see the features on how to use it with FT8 and you know the JS8 call, check out my other videos, uh, specifically the DigiPi 1.6 release. All right, but that's my DigiPi. We're not interested in that. What we want is your builds. All right, so we're going to start at the top here. These are in no particular order, and uh, this was, uh, I got these from Discord, okay, a lot of these. So if you guys are posting your images to our Discord channel, I'll, I'll put a link to the DigiPi Discord um, down in our uh, in the notes here. Let me make this a little smaller. So I'm getting them from here uh, and hanging out in the lounge. You guys are sending your, your DigiPi pictures. And I probably didn't even tell you that I, I'm making secret copies of them so we can put them in this video. So this is Discord for DigiPi. I'll put that link down there. All right, let's start at the top. We've got to Brian, N2KGC. Uh, Brian, I think, wins the most colorful DigiPi. I can, I think I can zoom these images in. You guys can see this okay? Yeah. So he's kind of kind of this cool skeletal case. He's got the Class B DigiPi where he has a push-to-talk circuit. I don't know what radio you're using. Um, so he's got the audio card and the monitor and the Raspberry Pi Zero on the bottom. And this has a, a FET circuit that I just showed you. Um, so you can do the push-to-talk switching. Um, so Brian, they've got a couple of these. You can see it's three layers here. The Pi, the FB audio board, and the cool monitor. I don't see where the FET is, Brian. I see you've got a cable here. I, I bet you, you snuck it under there. That's usually where I, I try and hide it because... You know, if you don't have a breakout board where the FET push to talk circuit, it's just kind of like a squashed bug implementation. All right, another angle. Ooh, I got, I like the lighting on that one. You guys need to turn them on too. We need to see what's on the screen. Uh, so plug them in. Actually, this thing is, is plugged in. Um, maybe it's just the glare on the screen. Oh, I see it. We've got activity here. You've got it in uh, DigiPi in TNC mode. I see the stations coming in on your DigiPi, Brian. Great work. Okay, next up is Simon. Uh, actually, we got a decent sized picture here. Simon uh, in uh, Great Britain. Um, we've got a DigiPi with just the audio board and no monitor. And you've got the incredibly expensive Yesu cable. I think that's what this cable is here. Ah, this cable is like 50 bucks. And this you know makes it work with the Yesu FTM100, the FTM400. Um, I've seen some knockoffs on this. Um, so I don't know if you can get a cheaper cable or not. But this looks like the expensive one. So good work, Simon. Um, so you got the Pi Zero and the FB Pi audio boards. This is a Class B uh, Raspberry Pi that works with the push-to-talk circuit. Um, once again, Simon's got his turned on. That's a great shot, actually. You know, these things never photograph well. The uh, I don't know, something about the video. Uh, you know, you just can't control the brightness. Um, but again, you've got the Raspberry Pi, the FB Pi audio board. Um, you've got the push-to-talk and LEDs, like when it's receiving stuff. Uh, the DigiPi software will light, uh, illuminate, set up. Exert a voltage on a pin so you can use an LED, light an LED. So you've got the green LED and the red LED. You know, you can put a blue LED on there as well. Um, 
I did that on this one. Uh, so like for when Bluetooth's connected, um, you know, at, in fact, you almost don't even need the screen if you got the LEDs on there. So there's three LEDs that the DigiPi software will light up uh, based on what your DigiPi is doing. Great work, Simon. Just fantastic. So I know we said we were done talking about mine, but um, <laughs> I, ha I had some pictures of mine. I want to make sure that I covered this. So this would be a class A implementation where we've, we've got of the DigiPi. We've got a Pi Zero and just the monitor. And everything else is done over the USB cable. So this is connected to, I don't know, it was either 705 or the 991 or 7300. Those have USB ports for cat and audio. And this one isn't a DigiPi. This, don't, don't think this is a DigiPi, but this is, we desperately need a case for this, you guys. Um, I mean, desperately. If any of you got 3D printing ideas, um, let's hear them. Um, this, a case like this, you know, with the plexiglass, this would be awesome. I think this is a Zoom spot. Um, but to me, this would be like the perfect case for the DigiPi. It just doesn't exist yet. And of course, uh, here is another Class B DigiPi with the monitor and audio card. And this is actually connected to a Yaesu 2980. That's a really good DigiPeter radio, radio. No moving parts, up to 80 watts, runs cool. Uh, what I liked about this picture is uh, this is the International Space Station flying by. This was its beacon uh, flying by, NA1SS. See, the 1SS is like ISS. So this is the uh, the American call sign for the uh, International Space Station for the Amateur, amateur Radio ISS. ISS International Space. It actually it crops that. I should fix this. Anyways, that's the the digi the Dire Watch software I've modified a little bit to do full screen, and you can see this uses a satellite icon. So that is uh, my DigiPi. That's usually on the wall over there. In fact, uh, that's this guy right here in action. That DigiPi, and he works with push to talk radios. All right, that brings us to Jake. Now, Jake actually has a sideways digital pie. I love it. That's the first one. It kind of mimics uh, the, the Beofang you've got there. And I've been trying to make a cable for this. I know these can be hot with RF, so this is a really cheap radio transceiver. Um, I've used it, kind of hacked, hacked one together a, a long time ago. Um, this is like a $25, $30 radio, and you're totally on packet networks using this and the DigiPi, especially the one that, that Jake uh, built there, KF0ARE. Um, and so you've got the push-to-talk circuit here on a breakout board, a stitch board. you got the FET for switching and some resistors for the, the LEDs. you got a full LED implementation because the DigiPi will light up red, green, and blue based on if it's transmitting or receiving, or you've got a, a phone connected over Bluetooth. I really like this one, Jake. Uh, just really clean. Let me know how this works. I know a lot of people say, well, the Beofang's stuff is really hot with RF, um, and it will sometimes jam an audio card. Uh, let me know if you've got any choking on that and choking in your Pi. I would be interested in that, because this is like the cheapest solution you can do. Really elegant. Uh, great work, Jake. And Josh, um, I don't know if I have a close-up of your pie. I just like this shot because this is obviously your RV. And you've got the DigiPie hanging out right here in the window, uh, dangling from the, the roof and down into what looks like your Yesu 991. So I'm guessing this is a Class A DigiPie where you just have the pie itself and a, U a USB cable. That's it. And the DigiPie software image. Great work, Josh. I need a clip. I know if it is just a Raspberry Pi, I guess it's not that that cool of a picture. But it is a good example of that's all you need to get into uh, to implement every digital mode uh, on your amateur radio. You know, you spend a thousand dollars for one of these radios, and they do voice and RTTY. I, I don't understand the fascination with RTTY, but. <laughs> that's all they do. A thousand dollars. So you get a DigiPi and, and attach it to one of your radios. And you get every digital mode you can think of. And, and not only that, you don't need a computer and a bunch of wires. You get every digital mode you can think of using your phone. Like here's using APRS Droid. And we can do FL Digi and, and, F, and JSA call. So it basically turns all of your uh, digital modes for your radio into apps. All right, good work, Josh. All right, we've got KE4BML. So, sorry, I don't know your first name. So when we, when we do Discord, you guys got to like put your name or something in instead of your call sign, unless we want to be known by your call sign. So uh, KE4BML says he is in uh, quarantine, uh, and this is my kind of quarantine. I think Josh, the first step, or I'm um, sorry, KE, KE4BML, first step is admitting you have a problem. I think you have more DigiPies than I do. I don't know if you guys can see them here. I see one, two, three, four. Is there is there six DigiPies? I'm not sure what this transceiver is. 
Um, this is this is like heaven for me. This would be like my garage if I could have a garage like this. <laughs> Ke4 BML going nuts with the Divijapai. Cool. I see you have some alternative screens too. I'm gonna want to know about it if see if those work. Let me know if my Dire Watch software is driving that screen. All right, KN6GHS. All right, this one has like a, a breadboard implementation. I didn't even know Adafruit. I think this is an Adafruit thing, but Adafruit sells this breadboard um, where you can you know, implement the, the, the three LEDs, the push-to-talk circuit, and you've even got a DIN connector stuck on there somehow. Uh, I'd be curious how secure that is. Is that solid? Um, KNG, KN6GHS. Hey, you're in, uh, you're in California here. I wonder if we're near each other. Uh, but this is, again, a Class uh, B DigiPi implementation with the DigiPi down here, the FEPi audio board, um, as opposed to the Audio Injector Z. And then you've got this cool stitch board, so you got a real clean solution. Let me see what the next one is. I love the wire colors here. I like the aesthetics. You know, I, it's it's not so much the engineering, but the combination of engineering and art. I think that's why I like, I just like this being really small and compact. You guys are just killing it absolutely killing it so yeah here's the din connector on a kn6 ghs uh, digipi um i don't know what radio you're connecting it to maybe like get the radio in the background yeah like when you guys give me these shots that would be cool and here it is again and i'm looking at what you've got under here uh the switching circuits up here yeah these are just solder points to the to the audio board so it's really easy to solder to the audio boards right you don't have to use the jacks if, if you don't want to it's a little cleaner and your screen's looking good. This is a good close-up of the stitch board. I do, a lot of guys are making half stitch boards. So it's like a half a hat um, for their, to, to, you know, to put their their FET and their LEDs in. What I just did is just kind of twisted everything together and, and soldered it and shrink-wrapped it. And then just kind of, you know, you can't see. It's all just kind of jammed under here, you know, uh, the, the FET and the resistor that actually does the switching. It's kind of ghetto, but, you know, if you can't see it, it doesn't exist, right? So no no one's going to know the difference. You guys are killing it, though. Yeah, here's a better shot of that breadboard without the monitor on it. Cool. And I did move all the GPIO pins over to one side so you wouldn't have to, you know, mess with pins that are under the monitor. So that's we can keep all of that stuff on that side. We've got just enough GPIO pins over there without getting messing with pins that are under the monitor. KN6GHS, killing it. All right, Mark, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Mark's got the soda operation. He's got the, the tactical bag. He's got the ICOM 705. And he's got a Class A DigiPi, which is just the Raspberry Pi Zero and the monitor. Of course, the monitor is optional. You don't really need it for Class A. And you got a USB cable. All you need is the Pi. But you've got it. So M, M0IAX, you're on the board there. Looks like your local Digi is MB7UMH uh, coming through on the ICOM 705. Also looks like, I'm assuming Europe. I'm sorry, I don't know the M call sign, but I, I know you're not in the Americas because you're on 144.8 megahertz. Um, looking good there. And Mark, this is the same thing on your desk, and you are managing it over... Uh, Wi-Fi on your local home network, and this is how you start and stop all of the services on the DigiPi homepage. So this is an older release. We've got a newer release since this. Also, I fixed the HTML on this. So the buttons render much more accurately on iOS. So Mark, thank you for texting, testing the iOS part of this and the, the Safari browser. And once again, uh, the DigiPi looking in. Actually, got a little case on this guy now, a little skeletal case. You need to look in that as well. It's really do easy to do a case on a uh, Class A DigiPi because you can just kind of, you know, do a flat case and then the monitor, the pins always usually usually protrude a little bit through the case, or at least accessible. Then you can you can jam the monitor on there, so that's looking good. Uh, what else we got here? Let me back this off a bit. But the glare is just awful on these. I don't know how you guys film. See, if I put my hand over it, it looks cool. Yeah, we'll go with it. Um, all right, Mark, looking good. So Matt, um, ah, this is a huge, huge picture. This is an older one. Matt was one of our first victims to actually build a DigiPi. We learned a lot from Matt. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> we got to get pictures with stuff on the screen, too. Um, so this one's kind of the, um, you know, Bud Churchwood, if you're out there listening, Bud. I think you called this the smashed bug approach, <laughs> where, you know, you don't really have a circuit board or a stitch board. You're just kind of twisting wires together and soldering and taping. Uh, Matt has dominated that. So Matt looking good. Uh, this is a Class B DigiPi where you've got the push-to-talk circuit and the audio board added. Uh, so you can attach it to virtually any radio at that point. 
And then we've got Patty. We're going over the ocean here. Patty, all right, uh, TE0TWD has got uh, what looks like a Class A DigiPi uh, hooked up to a USB-based radio because um, I don't see the sound card and I don't see the push-to-talk circuit. So I don't. where's your radio? Um, I see you've got a nice big choke. Do put chokes on these USB cables. Um, some of these cables are hot with RF. I see you got a nice RF choke on there. Um, that's really going to help. Every now and then, you know, if your radio is locking up right after transmit, that means you've got RF going through it. It doesn't damage it permanently um, unless there's something really wrong, but it, it will potentially lock it up. I have seen that. So, again, you've got an iOS device here uh, rocking the DigiPi. Uh, looking good. Patty, thank you. All right, so this leads us to PD1MV. I'm sorry I don't know your first name. So PD1MV, and I, I should know what nation that call sign is from. Uh, you have a design for a cradle for an ICOM 705. If you were to build this, they will come. Not even if from a DigiPi perspective, but it's just a cool stand for your ICOM 705 because this thing is, is just wobbly as heck. Uh, I don't know if you guys have your non-705 owners. This is always kind of moving around. I mean, I have a... You know, kind of a, I have this cool cage on it, but it, it's still, it's such a, a light radio. It needs like a big foot that we can put on it. And that's what this is, is a foot for a 705, but it's special. It has space for a Raspberry Pi. Just so I can zoom this in a little more. And I've scrolled through a bunch of them. PD1MB. Okay, we can see it up here. See, the Raspberry Pi is all stealthy down here in the bottom of the case. But then once uh, you get a screen, PD1MB, um, I think we talked about you could actually cut a square in this. Well, not cut, but not print a section where the screen could be detached from the Pi. And so you just see your 705 and the foot, and there'd just be a little screen all, all you know, felt all flush with, with the, the body. And it would just look like the uh, DigiPi is part of the radio. This is cool. So... I don't know anything about 3D printing, but PD1MV, if you get this built, um, they will come. I'll be there. I'll be the first to get one of these from you. Um, all right, so that leads us to Rob. So Rob is our minister of hardware, our uh, our president of, I don't know what starts with P, <laughs> our keenster of kit. I don't know. Rob is a real hardware engineer. Like, unlike me, I just fake it. You know, I I pretend to be hard. I'm a software engineer. They don't even let me play with hardware at work, right? So I, I write all the software. <laughs> so, so Rob is killing it. Rob's got a bunch of pictures here. Thank you, Rob. So this is an FEPI audio board. Uh, if so Rob's building the Class B DigiPi with a full audio board and push-to-talk circuit. Um, there's nothing special about this one, but if, you, if we look closer, Rob's into modifying things. So tell me, you guys can see what the difference is. A, B, A, B, A, B. Rob stripped off all the unnecessary stuff, right? Uh, he's got rid of the capacitors, which I think were for the headphone. Um, so he's made this thing like razor thin. Uh, let's look, take a look at this one. So this is an example of the Raspberry Pi, then the audio board, and then the monitor. Look how thin it is just by get, getting rid of those components and using a not even a stacking header. I think you were able to man, manage the whole thing on the, the standard Pi header. Um, so if you are willing to unsolder the unnecessary stuff from the FE Pi board, you can get a crazy thin build. It's just amazing. All right, I'm making sure I'm, I'm I'm checking time here. You guys, you know, YouTube says you guys don't like videos longer than 20 minutes, so you know that's, that's what I'm trying to do here. All right, so so Rob, uh, I'm, these aren't in any particular order, but here's this a similar one. I don't know if this is the one we just we just saw, but this is still crazy thin. He's got a case, he's got a battery connected to it, and the uh, audio cables here are actually on jumpers. I I can't I, amazing design. Here's the, yeah, here's the breakout breadboard for the jumpers also uh rob's like well if that wasn't enough he's like well i'll just put in a real time clock while i'm in there you know and so now he doesn't really need a gps right? for get, trying to get time uh, when you're doing soda so and you know and he's doing all this like in a single layer in a single pie layer um just amazing rob and this of course you've got the usb power thing going on over here as well cool and this is another shot of the same one um let's see this is the raspberry this is the actual GPS here. I know it's hard to see, but it's he's you've got it soldered up to the USB and power uh, ports on the Raspberry Pi is zero. So you've actually got a GPS integrated with this thing. Um, you've also got a breakout board, which a lot of people are doing. I like this breakout board idea that sits right next on the monitor. That's cool. Um, 
this is your expert soldering job. I wish I could solder like that. Um, and this is a, another completed version of the ultra thin pie. We should give this one a name, an ultra thin class B pie. I don't know. That's cool. It's just amazing. Uh, another one with the breakout board up top on that raspberry pie. Um, what do we got here? This is the one where you've actually got everything together. I think you have the real time. Do you have the real time clock on there? I can't, I can't tell here, but you definitely have the G rocking the GPS here on top of your push to talk circuit and your monitor and your Pi Zero. And you've got the FE Pi all stealthy underneath there because you were able to make it so thin. So Rob, I, you know, I, I wish I could hand out awards. You know, Rob gets the Rob K5RAB gets the award for thinnest DigiPi build ever. And probably in the history of, of the world or, or ever will be. This is amazing. And you added all these features. Yeah, that's fantastic. So the DigiPi image will look for a GPS. Um, it will look for it on USB. Um, I, I don't know which uh, what port this GPS is using. It's probably using the serial port, Rob, I'm guessing. I don't know if we talked about that. That built-in serial port pins um, that I think are under the monitor. Cool. All right. And then, and then we got Steve. Steve's killing it with lots of pictures. Steve actually printed. Let me see if I can find it here. I'm going to blow through this. Steve actually printed a board. I had a board printed that implements all of the LEDs. It implements not one, but two radios. Um, it has the, the FET somewhere in here. I'm not seeing the FET, Steve. Is it behind something? I don't know. I don't, I don't want to. Oh, here it is. Here's a copy of the board. So, yeah, you've actually got two FETs here, these, these rectangular things. And then you've got resistors, current limiting resistors, of course, for the LEDs. So you, you've got, you know. Re, uh, transmit and receive for different, two different radios and oh you have the bluetooth lid so that that, should, that one should be blue right when someone connects over their phone so you know get a status there and then you connect your your radio actually here's a really close-up of it a good rendering steve you're just owning it you guys are killing this you guys should have digipi channels and then you know what i really like this i like this shot because it's not only is it you know glowing and working but it actually looks like an old vacuum tube set right just a really small scale <laughs> yeah and, and you've got the resistors that are vertical right so they'd fit and i think we talked about this. these are quarter watt resistors but of course eight watt resistors will work and steve i think you just said well that's what was in my drawer of course you know how many design specs come from well that's what was just in my drawer. Uh, a lot of stuff's built that way. All right, looking good, Steve. Unbelievable. Steve, KM5HT. He's got a Class B DigiPi with an audio board and a custom uh, a, a PCB printed circuit board that sits perfectly right next to the Adafruit uh, 240 by 240 TFT monitor. Just the perfect package. I don't know, you and Rob, I don't know, I, I think you're, Rob wins the thinnest. But Steve, yours wins the, I don't know, the Steampunk Award? You know, guys know what Steampunk is? <laughs> I don't know. It just looks, it just looks cool. Uh, you know, engineering is one thing. Art is another. You guys are nailing it. In fact, uh, I think you're going to OSH Park. So what we need to do, Steve, is um, make it so these can be available to other people. So they can go out and say, hey, I want a DigiPi, I want a DigiPi hat, NPN, and, uh, and, and print it. All right, so this is Steve. Actually, Steve's reverse engineering the FE Pi audio board. So at some point, it would be cool. We can have an FE Pi audio card that we can order, have printed, and maybe have some of our circuitry in it as well. Uh, let's see. We, okay, we've got this Steve. This is, your, I think, your last one. And then we've got Walt Boring, uh, my uh, partner in crime when it comes to a lot of software development. Uh, he's really helped with the APRS deep uh, software project for you know, running APRS uh, autoresponder backends. He's usually actually using a CM4 compute module. Uh, for his pies because he wants all of the extra io so that's a possibility as well so those are your digipies awesome work you guys uh, let me make this smaller you guys don't need to see all of this um, also bud like i said has 50 fe pi audio cards cards in stock okay so you can buy the fe pi audio card or the audio injector zero from amazon but uh, if you go to uh, whiskey bravo 7 foxtrot hotel charlie.com um, you're going to find the order form uh, it says order nexus now and then you click on the fe pies you can get one or you can buy two so it's still limited we still got real supply chain problems you guys okay um, I know it's really hard to find Raspberry Pis. Um, I was going to do a whole show on how to find parts in a supply chain disaster. Um, so right now for Raspberry Pi Zeros, look at um, 
chicagodist.com, chicagodist, like chicagodistribution.com. They have them in stock now and then. Of course, look at Adafruit. And then if you really got to get a Raspberry Pi Zero Two, you can still find them on in kit form and Amazon. You're going to pay more because you're going to get the power supply, USB hub, and all this other stuff they throw into it. You could pay a lot more for the Raspberry Pi Zero. Normally, it's $15 by itself in the normal world, but in this new world that we've created for ourselves, um, it is now you know $60 in kit form. Um, what else we got? So I want to make sure we covered everything. Um, kind of want to do a Linux command of the day. Maybe we'll save that for another time. I know we're, we're moving on in time here. So last but absolutely not least, uh, this video would not exist. The DigiPy would not exist. Absolutely, at least not in its current form and not in a usable form without you guys. So patreon.com slash km6lywradio. Uh, the support here has been absolutely overwhelming. Thank you so much. So Fu Hang, I mean, you've been you've been one of the first first guys. I think this is, these are in order of, you know, who, who started backing me the, the first, who actually believed in the digipi project in the community so foo thank you buddy uh, brian jake jason dan christopher simon uh, thank you guys um i, I you know I, I wish i could read all all of the names here um jeff i know you're not on the list here but thank you jeff has really been helping out um who do we got i'm trying to i'm trying to find some um some notable names. I, you know, I've been exchanging email with a lot of you too. Don't be afraid to email me. You should all have my email. In fact, Don, thanks for the email exchange. John, Don Rolf, appreciate it. Uh, all your feedback. Uh, we, when we're talking about his build, especially when it comes to procurement of, of, of these parts, man, it's tough. Uh, let's scroll through these a little more. Fallen Yoda. I always mention that. that I don't know why that stands out. I mention that every time. <laughs> uh, Q1Q, looking good. Joshua, thanks. Rocky, Mark, uh, Ghostman. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Mike, Ben, SB Fox, uh, Patty, of course, Ziggy Zog, Bud, Bradley, Domingo, Fred, <laughs> JD. I'm overwhelmed. Look how long this list is. You guys are all supporting not only the, you know me personally, but you're supporting each other on Discord and in the mailing list, uh, really helping out. Uh, you guys bring so much to the table. Uh, this is a fantastic community. I'm really enjoying working on the DigiPi project. So thank, thank you guys. All right, with that, I've got to get out of here. Um, like and subscribe. We're over a thousand subscribers. I don't know what that means. I just clicked through the end user license agreement for YouTube's and I don't know what 1000 means. I, Someone might just come over to your house and punch you in the head, as far as I know, <laughs> at 1,000. Hasn't happened yet, but thank you. So please like and subscribe on YouTube. And uh, I'm going to put all the links to the DigiPi um, stuff, how to get the DigiPi software image. Of course, that's craigerorg slash DigiPi. Um, you can get the image there um, if you want to start hacking on this and, and join the community. So again, this is KM6LYW Radio Craig in cool California. And uh, I'm clear.